This is the second part of a two-part video series in building a MIDI interface to interpret MIDI signals from Logic Pro and control the recording light. This part of the video will go over the Arduino sketch or program that we upload into the Arduino board to interpret those MIDI signals. Before going on to talk about the actual program, I wanted to do an overview of MIDI, which stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. So MIDI information is sent in bytes, which are composed of 8 bits made of zeros or ones. The first byte is a status or command byte, such as note on or others. And the two bytes that follow after the command byte are data bytes to provide more information about the command. So status or command bytes always start with a one. And the command byte holds data for actually two things. One is the command in the first four bits. And the second is the channel in the last four bits. Uh, let's use the note on command byte sent on channel 2 as an example. So if a command byte is sent as note on, then two more data bytes are sent following that command. Therefore pitch or the note and velocity or volume. So if the command byte is 1001, 0001 as in this example, then the data byte starts with 1 and it's interpreted as a command byte. Knowing this is a command byte, MIDI takes the first half as 1001 followed by four zeros, which equals 144 in decimal, and this is the value for the note on command in MIDI. The second half of the byte is then interpreted as seven zeros with the one at the end, 0001, and that's uh, equal to one in decimal, which is considered MIDI channel two. So when Logic Pro sends a starts recording, it sends a command byte note on on MIDI channel two, the second data byte is the pitch and it's ignored, followed by 127, which tells our program to turn the light on. When the recording is stopped, it again sends the note on command in MIDI channel 2. The pitch again, the second data byte is ignored, and then the third data byte has a value of 0 instead of 127, and the program interprets that to turn the light off. In order for our MIDI interface to control the recording light, the Arduino board has to have a set of instructions on how to interpret the MIDI data sent by Logic Pro from the computer. Um, we do this through a program, or what's called an Arduino sketch. To upload this sketch or program to the Arduino board, you do need the Arduino software, which you can get free from the site. So this particular program I based on an Arduino MIDI tutorial by Stefan Mellon. Uh, there's a link here to his tutorial and some of his programs if you're interested. Anything after these double hashes or between a, ha a combination of a hash and an asterisk are, and are and in gray are comments and they're not used as commands by the board. So the first thing we do is we include a software serial.h library and this particular command following the inclusion of that library defines pin 2 on the Arduino board as the pin where we're going to receive data from Logic Pro. It also defines pin 3 on the board as a place where we can transmit MIDI data, but we don't send any data back to Logic Pro, so we don't use that pin in, in our case. Next, we use the hashtag define component to give names to constant values. Uh, for instance, pin underscore LED is defined as 13. It turns out that pin 13 on the Arduino board has a hardwired LED to it. So we can use the LED on the board to sort of mimic the recording light, which could be good for testing purposes. Pin underscore relay is defined as a value of 7. Pin 7 on the Arduino board is the pin that we use as an output to go to the relay to control the uh, recording light. I also define a pin relay underscore B as pin 8 so that we can use pin 8 to the second relay on the board, which in the current application is unused but might be used in the future. Another set of hashtag defined components gives names to MIDI command values. For instance, MIDI note on is given a value of 144, which you'll remember is the value that MIDI uses for note on command. We also define MIDI note off as 128. We don't use this constant value again in the program. It could be taken out and the program would still run fine. There are some other integers uh, variables that we define. 
One is filter channel, and we give it a value of 1, and that corresponds to a MIDI channel of 2. We have a variable called filter note that we give a value of 24. This is for some more advanced functions. Um, we don't use that in this program. Again, you could take this out, and the program would run, run, run just fine. A third set of hashtag defined components gives names um, to some values of 0 through 2. Uh, state none is defined as a value of 0. State command sent is of, defined as a value of 1. And state node is a value of 2. And these are used for a switch statement, which I'll describe more when we get to the main loop program. And then we define an integer uh, state. Next, we define five variables that are bytes. A byte is essentially an array of eight bits of information that will be held all in this one variable name. Because we re rem remember, we, re we read MIDI data in packets of eight bits, or bytes. Next, we have a small setup subroutine, which essentially just gets our uh, variables ready uh, before the main program begins. MySerial.begin starts the process of looking for data being sent serially by Logic Pro at a rate of 31,250. That's the baud rate. And then there's just a small delay of 30 ticks put in to allow that data to start buffering. Next, we define the pins on the Arduino board to tell them what type of data to expect. Um, we use the command pin mode. Pin underscore LED, again, is pin 13, where the LED is hardwired onto the Arduino board, and it's defined as an output pin. Pin underscore relay is pin 7, and pin underscore relay underscore B is also defined as an output pin. Remember, pin relay is pin 7, and pin relay B is pin 8, which we don't use in this particular application. Once we've defined the pins, and it knows what type of uh, data to expect, then we can write to the pin and essentially turn all these pins to low or off uh, to set uh, prepare the board before the program is run. So we tell pin underscore LED, which is pin, um, it's pin 13, we set that to low, essentially turning the LED off. Pin relay, which is pin 7, goes to low or turns it off, which turns the relay off so that the light should start in an off position. And then pin relay B, which is pin 8, again not used, but uh, we set that to low. Next, we tell, we um, assign the variable, the integer variable state, the value of state none, which you'll remember is a value of 0. That brings us to the main loop of the program. The first thing we do in the main loop is we say, is there any MIDI data there to be read? So using an if statement, if my serial available is greater than zero, or essentially saying if there is any data being sent by Logic Pro there to be read, then let's read that first MIDI byte. And remember, that first MIDI byte is going to contain what? The first four bits is going to have the command data, and the next four bits is going to be the channel number. So MIDI byte equals my serial, read the first byte, and we get to the switch statement. Now switch statements work by looking at the value of state, and depending upon the value, it'll go to a different case. If, for instance, if state equals state none, it'll go to the first case and execute these commands. If state equals state command sent, it'll go to this case and execute these commands. And if state equals state note, it'll go to this case and execute all these commands. So the first time around, state is equal to state none, or we know that state none is also a value of 0. So it'll start here by executing these commands. Now the first thing we do is extract the command and the channel data from that very first byte of data that's being read. We do this using a bitwise AND operation. That's the operation that's used to extract the first four bits for the command and the second four bits for the channel. It's not a difficult um, operation, and I may do another video to describe it. Suffice it to say that when we do this operation, we do extract that data from that first byte. 
Then we go to a series of if statements, and we say if the MIDI channel is equal to the filter channel, which remember is 1 or MIDI channel 2, then if the MIDI command, the first four bits, equals MIDI note on or 144, then change the state from state none to state command sent and break out of the loop and go over to the top of the program, go back to the top of the program and read the next byte. So now we're reading the second byte, which is the note or pitch. We read that second byte in and we go to the switch statement and this time state is no longer state none, it's now state command sent. So we skip this case and we go to the second case of state command sent. And we make the byte variable MIDI note equal to the byte that was just read. But you'll remember the second byte by MIDI is the pitch or the note and we don't use it in this application so we don't do much with it. What we do do is we change the variable state from state command sent to state note and we break out of the loop and go back and now let's read the third byte of data or the velocity data. So we read the third byte, the velocity data, we go to the switch statement and now state equals state note. So we switch, we skip this state uh, case, we skip this case and we go to the case state note and execute these commands. First thing we do is we make the byte variable MIDI velocity equal to the byte that we just read. Now you remember, in the case of Logic Pro recording light uh, control surface, the velocity value of 127 is sent when the recording starts and a velocity of 0 is sent when it stops. Before we go any further, we change the state back to state none because we've now at this point read all three data bytes that we're interested in. So we want to go back to state none so that when we go through the program again, it'll go and start at uh, uh, the top of the switch statement. Next, we go through a series of if commands to turn the recording light on or off depending on what values were sent by Logic Pro. So if the MIDI command that we got in the first byte is MIDI note on or 144 and MIDI velocity which we got from the third byte read is 127 then the recording has started. So we write to pin LED which is pin 13 on the Arduino and we turn the LED on on the board and we write to pin relay which is pin 7 on the Arduino board and we turn that pin on which activates the relay, closes the circuit and turns the recording light on. The next three commands you essentially could leave out of the program and it would still work. This has to do with pin 8 and I use this essentially to operate, potentially operate the second relay on the board which is going unused in our current application. To turn that relay on just briefly, let's turn the relay on, delay for about 300 ticks and then turn the relay off to work like a momentary switch. And I was my thought was that maybe we could use that with a switch that would control maybe like a, a wireless light outside the studio. So it's just something for thought, maybe something you want to develop in the future and utilize. So now at this point we've read three bytes of data. Let's say now that Logic Pro, somebody that you turn the recording off and Logic Pro sends another three bytes of data, it's going to go through this again only this time on the third byte of data when it gets to this case it's going to say if MIDI command is MIDI note on yes and the MIDI velocity instead of being 127 is 0 then the recording is stopped and it'll execute these it'll write to the pin LED on thir uh, pin 13 on the Arduino board and it'll set it to low or turn the LED off it'll write to pin relay which is the pin 7 output to our relay It'll turn that to low or off, and it'll turn off the relay, break the circuit, and the recording light will go off. These next three, again, you wouldn't need in our program, but it would essentially do the same as um, when you turn the note on. It turns relay B on briefly and turns it off, as if you depressed a momentary switch again to say turn like a wireless light now off. That is the end of the loop statement. Um, each time it gets to the end, it of course just goes to the top and runs over repetitively.